Hi, friends. It's great to see you. Thanks for being here on this lovely Tuesday. It's um, the beginning of the year. And so one of the things that's taking up, oh, our check-in question is what's taking up your mental bandwidth or your RAM today? One of the things that's taking up my, my mental bandwidth or RAM is I'm doing a diet. I never, I have never, I've done one diet once a year ago and I'm like drinking these juices. I, I feel a little ashamed that I'm showing you plastic single use bottles, but um, I'm pretty hungry. And so one thing that's happening for me is I'm like, we're doing kind of a juice cleanse, which, ugh. but I'm, I'm like a little, you know, a little, not weak, but I'm like noticing like, oh, it was time for another juice. So that's something that's taking up. And I think what that means, like on a deeper level is like commitment to health. Um, boy, I really went for it over the holidays. Um, and that means lots of eggnog. And so I'm sort of like doing that cliche, like reset, like, okay. Um, but I'm going to stick with it. I'm going to stick with it for, I'm going to, I'm going to say to you all as my, um, forced accountability partners right now, I'm going to stick with this for at least a month. And then I will maybe do a second month. We'll see. I was able to do that last year. Um, hi, I'm Ethan. If we've never met before, it's good to meet you. Um, and I, uh, let me walk through the bullet points of the things we're going to cover today. Um, this, the, it's kind of a silly title that I gave for this webinar, but I literally have the title of this book, Your Best Year Ever, like sitting on my desk. I don't know that I would necessarily recommend it. I think it's a little bit light. I took some stuff from it for today's session. And um, I really do like genuinely wish for you all and for myself that we have the best year ever. And so I want to share some resources today that I hope will help you have a great year. Um, let me walk through like the bullet points of what we're covering. So first, we're going to talk about reflection a little bit. Um, I was sharing with my team today. There's some questions that I use to think back on the year. And so I want to do like a mini reflection exercise with y'all. So you'll be, I'll invite you to just type on your own, or you can type in the chat as I ask these questions. So we'll kind of look back on the year that was. Uh, and then I'm going to offer you um, a, a planning tool that I use for planning out my ideal week. I legit use, I, I mean, I use all these tools, but I legit use this. I created my new one and I, I probably update it every six months or so. I've probably done this eight or 10 times um, for kind of mapping out. Okay, here's what I would like my week to look like. Uh, and then I want to share with you some apps, some things that have helped me be more productive, some that I've used, especially this year, and have saved me a whole bunch of time. I want to talk a little bit about, I want to do a little future casting. I don't often do this because I think it's really hard to know how things are going to change in the college admissions world, but there are a few things that I'm tracking for that I'm really curious about. So I'll share with you three ways that I think that um, things will change this year, um, or else I should say shift, because I think it's going to be sort of gradual. And then um, I want to share with you themes that I'm calling in for myself and invite you to share some of the themes that you're calling in. So I want this to be kind of like part reflective, part brainstormy, part just like, oh, Ethan sharing some cool things that he's excited to, to share. Uh, and then I want to share with you this course that this counselor training program that uh, you probably received an email about today, but I'm super excited to um, create a platform for more connection and community. And I'll walk you through that at the end. So let's do this. Um, so the first thing I want to jump into is I want to actually just, if you'll humor me here for a few minutes, let's just do a little typing together. And what I mean by this is I want to ask you a few questions. These are some questions that I use when I'm thinking back on my year. Where these came from, and I'll send out links to all this stuff later, is I have a friend named Laura Sims who has an awesome company. It's called Your Career Homecoming. She helps people find their calling, but you've already found your calling, am I right? Um, and she offered these different um, sets of questions that we went through one per week. And one of them was called the look back pack. And these were the questions in the doc and I've used them every year to look back. So I wanna just invite you to, if you wanna put on some music, you can. Um, if you wanna like close your tabs or turn off your phone or whatever, and just invite you into like a little five minute thinking through um, exercise. And, and I want you to write, like if you, you can either write on a Google doc, you can go old school and, you know, pen and paper, or if you want to type in the chat, I would love that too, because I'd love to see you and, you know, feel more connected to you. Okay. So here's the first question that I use when I'm thinking back on the year. And I want you to go ahead and answer this if you would. But the first one is, let's start with what worked or what are you celebrating from the past year? 
And let's just make a list. List as many things as you can think of in, let's say, a minute. You can go one by one or just make a whole big list. So as you look back on the year, what worked or what are you celebrating? And I appreciate y'all who are sharing in the chat. I'm not, I'm going to resist reading them aloud. Some of you might feel too shy to share it with the whole group, but you might direct message it to me if you just want me to see it. I'm open to that too. Some of you are doing that. Lovely. These are awesome. Second question, what didn't work this year? Events, projects, relationships, workflows, Clients, I'll write these in so that you have them. So hot, humid, gross. So gross. It does save space. I've tried both ways. It does. I believe I just figured out this uh, trick. I want to have a hundred conversations right now with you.
Question three. Question three is where did I hold back or play small? I'm going to give an alternate question for anybody who's interested. If that question doesn't resonate, what did I surprisingly enjoy or surprisingly not enjoy? Hmm. And here's one more. What kinds of things did people say about my work? I'll put these in the chat in case you want to come back to these. Whoops, <laughs> with huge spaces in between. Um, I want to, this is an invitation. This is like non-required homework. Um, I'm going to send this, I'll send this out to you as a Google doc or Ashley, thanks for helping me do that. Um, there's another doc that I have. that's more of a looking ahead doc, but one of the cool ways that I use this is I take those four questions and I use them as a looking ahead doc. What do I mean by that? Imagine answering these four questions from one year ago, or sorry, one year from now, looking back on 2023. So imagine that it's January 10th, 2024. 
And you're so, what are you looking at? What are you celebrating from the past year? You see the mental, what didn't work last year? That's kind of an interesting one to try and predict. Where did I hold back or play small? I think that's something that I could probably predict about myself. And what kinds of things do people say about my work? So another way to use this looking back doc is as a, again, imagine that you're a year from now looking back on the year. What are you grateful for? But I'll, I will share with you separately a doc that actually asks those questions if you want to use that. Okay. Resource two. When I'm at this time of year, I use this doc, and this is from Michael Hyatt, from your best year ever. Let me share my screen real quick. So here's the blank version of this. It's a really simple doc. It, and it, some of you might be allergic to spreadsheets, if so I apologize. Um, but it's really simple and it has along one side times of day along the top days of the week. And then do I, is this a plan day an execution day planning review, et cetera. Here's a version I did when I was, when I woke up at five 30 and meditated, which I did for a few months. I was like, that's the, the ideal me that does that. Not any longer. Pel that's when I thought I was going to work out on a Peloton and I just, we didn't use it. So I got rid of it. Um, but we were, I was writing a book. This is, so this must've been like 2018 or 2019. And this is what I blocked the space out for. And then you could see my wife and I kind of like traded off back and forth with picking up my daughter. And then date night uh, was on Tuesday nights. It moved to Wednesdays. Um, but again, super simple. I'll put this in the chat actually. And you just go up and go to file, make a copy and feel free to, and it'll put one in your, um, in your, um, your Google Doc folder. But it's here's the thing I'll say about this is like my advice is to ooh, let me make sure I'm like sharing privileges. Hang on, let me make sure I'm 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 sharing. Oh, I'm not. Sorry. I'm gonna get like a like 20 requests for let me hold on. Stand by. Okay, cool. Sharing privileges now. Okay. Now you can get in and make a copy. Um but it's a really simple tool that I use and then I honestly don't think about it much. Please don't, if you're the kind of person who's likely to take something like this and then beat yourself up with it later because you didn't follow your ideal week, the word ideal, you know, put a little asterisk mentally or whatever you need to buy it so that this isn't something that you're like, well, if I don't do it, then I've let myself down. No, for me, this is a tool of sort of like having that moment of sitting and going, what would it, what would I like for it to look like? What would I like for it to be? And it's actually been clarifying. It's been clarifying with my partner as well, because I've shared this in some cases with her to go, hey, here's what, here's what I'm, here's what I'm aiming for. Um, and the impact for me has been, uh, it's allowed me to, for example, this most recent year, it's allowed me to clear space in my mornings for deep work. I've noticed that I need two to three hours to really dig in on something, you know, deep work, quick side note is a great book. If you don't know it by Cal Newport, um, it's really lovely and inspired me to like, you know, basically put my meetings in the afternoon. Um, so that's a tool that I love. Um, I also just want to open up conversation for a second. I'd love to hear, and please feel free to share links. Are there other tools that y'all use and enjoy? Let's make this a little potluck moment. When you're planning out your years, how do y'all do it? When you're reflecting, when you're looking ahead, and you can either just like chat type ideas, or if you have links that you could share, I'd super love it if we could just sort of like crowdsource this for a moment. What do you use when you're thinking about, when you're reflecting on who you've been and who you would like to be? Yes, Nadine. So far, I've only shared one link. I will we'll follow up with all the links in an email. None. That's why I'm here. Cool. How do you do a new year? I just left because some of you are like probably I've probably got some whatever you call it, you know, personal growth enthusiasts uh, also. My favorite scheduling software is Calendly. <laughs> Um, and I have a, some quick links set up so that when I type ECAL on my computer, it, it's, I've got hotkeys set up so that it spits out my Calendly link. I've also got that set up. If y'all don't know, this is a quick side note. If I type E, just my first initial, then Zoom, it types out my Zoom link so I don't have to go and copy and paste it. If you don't have hotkeys set up on your computer, I encourage you to like Google how to set up those quick shortcuts so that when you type a thing, it'll just automatically. So when I'm like inviting somebody to a Zoom call, 
in a Google Calendar, I just type eZoom and boom, it populates it. I'm just reading through some of these one day at a time. A lot of folks are using Calendly, cool. A pointlet. Burning bowl process, that sounds interesting. Ooh, I know the desire map, cool. The other one I really love is designing your, this is the other book that I have sitting here, is designing your life. If you're into the kinds of things that we're doing, yeah, getting a thumbs up from Devin, I can see. Highly recommend. And there's there are courses too that you can take if you're really into them. Cool. Okay. I want to get like practical and talk to you about some apps that I love that I've used, um, especially this year. Um, the first one is one that I've talked about on past sessions. So I'm gonna I'm gonna lead with this one. But it's an app called, and I'll put the links in. Actually, let me just share my screen. I think that'll be easiest. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's called Tomato One. <laughs> actually, it's gonna be more useful if I actually just share the timer because I want you to see how basic this is. So if you've ever, if you're a productivity nerd like me, you've heard of Pomodoros. Pomodoros are, it's basically a 25 minute timer. And you know, there's the, the quote that like work expands to the time you get it. And so what I find is that if I can limit myself, for example, I did this the other day, I was like, I only wanna spend 10 minutes on this particular thing. And lo and behold, I got pretty close. I had to like extend for an extra five minutes, but it didn't take up a whole hour. So this tomato one timer, and it's literally just type in tomato one. It's a free uh, timer. You set it for whatever you want. You hit start. It counts down to 25. And once it's done, it goes bling, this pleasant bling, and it gives you a little break. You can set it for whatever time you want here. And I know that sounds kind of basic, but if you're like me and you kind of get into flow with something and you're like, ah, I, I've totally lost time. I find that what I will sometimes do when I really want to be productive in a day is I'll, I'll assign number of tomatoes. I'll be like, I'm going to spend one tomato doing this and another tomato. And that just means 25 minute chunks. And what it's doing is it's, it's building in a little pause for me because it, it'll set a five minute break where I get up, stretch, get some water, do something, but it's taking me out of the, the flow state to sort of make me go, wait, do I want to keep working on this? And in some cases, I'll recommit. And I, I actually used this in a team meeting the other day. We had a little mini retreat at the house and folks came over and I said, okay, I want to spend 15 minutes talking about this particular thing. And then what happened after 15 minutes is it was like the timer went off and we go, do we want to keep talking about this or do we want to move on? And then we can wrap. So simple, but really effective. Some of you, yeah. And I'd love to hear in the chat, how else do folks use these? I know this isn't very, sorry, this isn't very like conversational. It's kind of me talking, but um yeah, I am interested in hearing other folks on how do you use your Pomodoros? Um, ooh, cool, teaching your avid kids, lovely. Time boxes, yeah, that's another way of talking about it, totally. And this is my little, and it's free, and this is my way of doing that. The other thing that I've done, and this is like a free thing for the first few, and then it's paid, is Loom. Raise your hand if you use Loom, or let me know in the chat. Loom is a really simple way to record a quick video. Oh, here's one from Morgan. Morgan didn't know she was going to be featured on this webinar. Um, but essentially, Loom allows you to record a quick video. You just it installs a little thing on your computer, and you hit record. And when you're trying to send that message to somebody, to a student, and the whatever it is, the essay or the thing isn't there, and you try to communicate it to them, and you're like, I can't just write an email about this. It's going to take me forever to write an email because it's going to I'm going to have to overthink it. If I can just send a three minute bit video and go, Hey. Um, and I can communicate. Suddenly they're getting tone. They're getting my, my loving attention in at least, you know, video form. And I found it's a great way to communicate about sensitive topics or things that I feel like, again, I'm going to obsess about over email. Um, and it's pretty easy to learn. The first ones, you know, maybe are a little bit awkward. Quick loom tip. I would recommend not sending people looms that are longer than ideally three minutes. I've gotten looms before that are like 15 minutes long. And I'm just like, oh, this was supposed to like, save a meeting and it actually is just me watching a 15 minute video. So, um, it, you know, best practices for looms when you're using these with folks, try to keep them short if you can. Sometimes what I'll do is once I've recorded a loom, if it's longer than five minutes, I'll actually just do the Rainer Maria Rilke or whoever said that thing. I'm sorry, I didn't have time to write a shorter letter. The modern equivalent is like, I'm sorry, I didn't have time to record a shorter loom. And so I'll actually just re-record it because now I've sort of figured out what I wanna say and I will just record the short version. Is it like Marco Polo? Sort of, yeah. I mean, you're recording a short video and sending it as a message. 
Um, Ashley is sending <laughs> sent 30 minute loops. <laughs> um, my kids don't look at recaps or action notes. Well, there's a really cool feature. I'm like, I'm like a hawking loom right now. There's a really cool feature inside loom that allows you to, let me just show you this cool thing. Um, ooh, this has got student names. Let me see if I can get some. Well, here's what, here's how I use them is, oh, here we've got one. Okay. So this is just me recording one for my friend, John. It also worked well for me, like reaching out with cold emails instead of just like randomly, you know, I, I will sometimes when I'm reaching out to somebody like it's an important relationship, I'll record a little video because in some cases they'll be more likely to watch it, I think, than just read the cold email. So here, let me show you the, this cool feature. So if you go to share, so this is a loom that I've recorded. I recorded it in October from my friend, John. And if you hit share and you go to embed, you can copy this GIF thumbnail and essentially what it's doing is, if you've ever seen in my emails where I have a little video that's moving like that, it's because I probably recorded a loom that's moving. And if you hit play, it'll just play right into the video. And it seems like super fancy, but it really is just like it's doing it instantly for you. And it's saved so many times, so many, so many meetings, so many like long conversations um, with students. You know, we use it internally as a team a lot. I probably sent, I use it for topic checks. Like when students are like, hey, what do you think of this idea? I'll kind of run through the Google Doc and, and just talk through what I'm seeing and thinking. Um, someone just mentioned in the chat, um, I, you know, my students don't watch, don't read the recap or the notes. Maybe send them a video. I mean, this is the, the thing that we've tried and it's worked pretty well. I think you can share a picture on them, but essentially it's like that little moving video. Um, can you screencast on them or share your screen? Absolutely. So yeah, so there's a, there are two modes. There's like, well, three modes. There's video only, which you just saw. There's screen only if you don't want to be on screen. And then there's like screen with little inset video and you can make yourself larger if you want. Um, let's see. Can you save looms and create a loom library? You can. They do that for you. I think that's the paid version, but um, no students read recaps, but they might watch a video. Try it. Let me know. I'm just curious to see. I think I have a feeling that I don't know, like 10 of you are going to try it maybe. And like two of you are going to be like, this changed my life. So it's kind of like, yeah, between TikTok and Instagram Zoom. Yeah, it is. And it, but it's, it's, it's like, I feel like it's such a simple concept, but I feel like somebody finally made it easy to share quick videos. Um, I use Canva to create my newsletters. Great. And I mean, here's the other thing is like, this is the things are so embeddable within those newsletters. So it's like, you're keeping that relationship, that connection with them. Um, let's see, Alicia, we're using them to send parents a two to three recap of the session and action times. For those of you who don't like writing notes and recaps, this is a, I think it's a lifesaver because it's like, here's the recap and you're getting the, the all the things, the things that I said I would send to you. And it doesn't, because for me, it takes forever to write up notes like that. Um, can Loom videos be forwarded by students to their friends? They can. So heads up on that. Um, I think Canva, yeah, Canva can be, we've got some cool templates that I can share later. Um, Calendly can be accessed through text. Yeah, you can just text it to somebody in the link and they can just open it up on their phones. Okay, the last one is paid, but it has positively changed my email life. I'm somebody who really likes to give back to people on email. Um, and I like to have a, a clean inbox. And so there is this program, it's, it's, it's software, it's called Superhuman. I'm just gonna flash up the screen for it because they do have kind of like nice branding. And Superhuman is 30 bucks a month. I'm not trying to sell you and I don't get paid for this. But, and I was like, that's a lot. Um, I should, I totally should send out a superhuman code. Yeah, maybe I will actually, I take it back. Maybe I will send out because I think that we both get a free month or something. So um, I, separate from that, you can also just not put in the code, but essentially what, what it's training you to do. We spend a lot of time, I'm like moving with my mouse right now to like admit people into the Zoom room. It's training you away from using your mouse and it's actually training you to use keys. So I can go through and save lots of milliseconds as I'm going through my emails and get to inbox zero. Not, I don't do it every day, but I do, I do it every week so that I get that. And then once you clear your inbox, it gives you this beautiful image that like rewards you. So it gives you the dopamine hit of that. Um, yeah, I totally agree with this. And they've also got this really sweet onboarding process where you like meet somebody from superhuman and they like talk you through and like teach you how to like check your email basically using the software. So anyway, Strongly recommend. I don't want to spend too much time on it because I know that is a paid one, but it's worth the 30 bucks a month that I pay because, because email is such a huge part of my life. Okay. So I want to talk about a few different things. Um, actually, let me just pause for a second because we're, we're good on time. And I'd love to just hear, are there any things that y'all engaged with this year 
like software or apps that just totally changed your life? Will you just like let us know in the chat? Um, I just want to open it up for a second. Um, if we had a longer session, I would unmute and we would all like talk to each other. But is there are there other things? A lot of folks are mentioning Canva, which we use a bunch here to design things. Trello, cool. Notion, I tr I've tried Notion. I haven't been able to fully get on board, but I love the YouTube videos on how I organize my life in Notion. And if you'll just give a little few words on what you use it for, like, I don't think I know Google Keep and just give us the little one minute, the one, the one line pitch for it. Like, what is this thing? What do you use it for? Ooh, no, we're not going to collect all these. Like, and that would just be a lot of work for Ashley. So if there are any of these sound interesting, you could just maybe type them to the side and then go look them up later. Look how many votes for Canva. Wow. College Planner Pro. Yeah. Notion. I've seen no, I've seen some amazing stuff happen with Notion. If that's curious, if you're curious about that, you can look up. There's a guy named Thomas Frank who does videos on how I organize my life in Notion, and they're very pretty. And um, it's you'll see lots of videos on YouTube on how to use Notion. College Kickstart, yeah. Stripe, yeah. The chat, I don't think the chat will be available with the recording, Kimberly. Council more, cool. Ooh, Flowdesk for beautiful newsletters. Evernote, I tried Evernote. I just couldn't, couldn't get into it. I have a different to-do list that I use. It's pretty simple. Okay, um, I'll write faster. Yeah, keep going, keep going. Um, okay, so another um, a, a thing that I wanted to talk about is that there are a couple things, and I don't know that we're going to get into like big conversations with them. I, I want to share with you how where I want to talk about these, and I do want to open up conversations about these soon. But one of the big things that I think is coming down the way that I'm tracking, and maybe some of y'all are tracking, is affirmative action. And I want to share with you, if this is not something you're tracking, here's a link to that's a quick primer that I don't mind if you... <laughs> multitask and, and read this while we're talking here, but essentially what's happening with this affirmative action decision. And I I, I want to just open it up in the chat for folks to share. What is your take so far? Do you think, is this happening? Is affirmative action going to get struck down? The One of the things you'll see on that ACLU link that I just shared is one of the questions that is commonly asked is what actions can colleges and universities take if the Supreme Court does rule to block race conscious admissions policies. Now, my sort of actually let me not say what I think. I want to hear what y'all think. Is 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 this happening? Is affirmative action going to get struck down or not? What is your take based on what you're hearing, what you sense? Um one of the answers on that ACL, ACLU page is that higher ed institutions will still be able to do outreach and recruit students from all backgrounds. Universities will still be able to stop considering factors that have been proven to create unjustifiable barriers for historically underrepresented students of color. For example, many schools have already stopped considering SAT and the ACT. Um, so I wanna invite you in the chat, I know this is like not, this is a weird forum to have like a pretty important conversation, but I wanna just sort of take the temperature of the, almost like sort of like the Greek chorus is like, what are, <laughs> are y'all's takes? And I'm gonna offer you, and we'll again, follow up with this in the, in the email. Um, but I wanna offer you a, a a podcast that I thought was nicely argued two sides, the two sides of it. So I'm seeing yes, 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 likely. Unfortunately, I believe so. We expect with this Supreme Court, I expect it to get struck down, sadly. That's kind of my take. That's sort of what I'm thinking about and expecting to. A, a second question that I want to ask is like, what can we do as counselors? What if this happens? What is our role and what is our job? I want to just open that up for a second in the chat. Curious to hear what folks have to say. It seems like a lot of folks are thinking it will be struck down.
I'm going to, I'm going to read some of these things aloud. Some of us folks might be on their phone or driving. So I'm just going to read some of the chat comments aloud. And again, the open question is what, what can we do as counselors? What, what actions can we take if this happens? Um, Tina says, part of my practice is volunteering my services. I, I won't actually say who's saying all of them. I'll just read the comments. Um, exposure to colleges that will accept and offer support for first gen and students of color. I think even if it does get struck down, colleges are moving to moving to an overall equity minded admissions process. I think colleges becoming test optional is a huge step. Continuing to support underrepresented students. Helping kids give their context in essays and in teacher recommendations. These can still be compelling. Helping students express identities in essays. Help provide access based on personal stories. Keep working and partnering with institutions and organizations that want to keep a diverse student body in their college and university. Work on our bias. Be match lighters. It becomes important for my avid students to be able to brag about what they do with their time that is as important as what wealthy students do. Yeah, I want to offer a specific one that I think. I think that if it, if and when it happens, I think that the additional information section is going to become even more important. I know that's a really specific tactical thing, but I think that it's a space where students can share whatever they want in that space. And even if colleges haven't asked, I think students can feel free to express their many different identities. One of the, my favorite exercises from this past year. Oh, is someone commenting? Oh, sorry, I thought someone was hopping in. Um, one of my favorite exercises this past year was an identities exercise, which is a really simple you know, five minute exercise where students basically brainstorm how many different identities can you think of? And it's become one of my favorite ones for helping students express different sides of themselves. And it's led to some really cool essays and supplemental essays, personal statements, supplemental essays. I think that talking about identity, even if the personal state, you know, and, and I, I also think, here's my little second prediction. I predict that colleges will pivot, I think actually pretty quickly on this and start to change their supplemental essays. And they're going to find ways to ask questions that are asking, but not asking. Um, this is, again, I don't have any, I haven't talked to somebody in, as an admissions officer who said, we are definitely going to do that if this happens. But I just think that, I think that already colleges have done that. I think we've seen certain colleges pivot because they're trying to, you know, enroll a diverse student population. So I think we could see supplemental essays shift. And does that mean more essays? I don't know. Is that a good thing? Not necessarily, not for everybody. Um, but the third way that I see our, just to pivot from affirmative action just for a minute, that I see our um, work changing is, have y'all been looking at this chat GPT thing? Have you spent much time with it? Have you have you tried to ask it some questions? Let me know in the chat. Have you, what have you, any, has anybody done any weird or interesting things with chat GPT? Have you asked it, for example, to, I don't know, write a personal statement or, you know, edit a personal statement? Um, ask it to write a letter of rec. There's one. I mean, I, I'm sort of going, is there a new <laughs> PD session on like how to, how to help use artificial intelligence to help write faster letters of recommendation? This is the AI, yes, Kath. And I, I would screen share right now, but it's so popular, it's actually, I can't actually get into it right this moment. So yes, Karen, are you saying that the common app will not ask about ethnic background in coming years? If the if affirmative action is struck down, that's what we're looking at, is that colleges won't be able to ask about race and consider that in, in admissions. Um, chat GPT, I know I'm mixing two big topics, but... Um, I haven't, but I've seen the results on Twitter. I, I encourage you to just, as an educator and as a counselor, to take a few minutes, probably later at night, because that's it's usually pretty busy during the day. Um, but type in some just just questions. I mean, here, let me give you an example. Um, there's some, we have this doc going on internally called "Some Things Chat GPT Can Do," and um, some things that Chat GPT can do are like, you know, creating a personalized weight, you know, loss plan or diet or giving a, a curated list of books based on particular interests. 
Um, here's another one. This is from an Atlantic article. I'm going to, some of your visuals, so I'm going to screen share again. So uh, this one said, so that the person typed in, explain the Madhyamaka Buddhist idea that all phenomena lack inherent existence using a funny specific example. And chat GPT wrote back as ever instantly, the Madhyamaka Buddhist idea that all phenomena lack inherent existence can be illustrated with a funny example. Let's say you have a pet hamster. You might think that your hamster has its own inherent existence, but in reality, your hamster is made up of many different elements, such as its fur, its bones, its muscle, and its brains. None of these elements exist independently or inherently on their own, so your hamster itself does not have any inherent existence either. The same goes for all phenomena. Everything is made up of various components that don't have inherent existence, so nothing has any inherent existence either. <laughs> In seconds, like it's I, what I would encourage you to do is do it so that you get back because I want you to see how this thing works in real time. There's an article and there's well, it's a Twitter feed about how admission officers were given, you know, a, an essay and a, an ecologist said it was written by uh, Chat GPT and ones that weren't, and it's bonkers. They couldn't tell the difference. So my so let me ask you this before I give you sort of my hot take is. And you may have delved into this and you may be, or this may be like the first time that you're really seeing like, whoa, this thing kind of maybe looks interesting. Does anybody have any like early predictions about what, any hot takes on what this could do to college essays? And I'm gonna read for those of you who may be on phones, I wanna sort of read some of the things. Oh, I, and I skipped past like, what is chat GPT? So it's basically open AI, open artificial intelligence, release this thing, it's a chat, thing that basically scans about a third of the internet. And the way that I've heard it described from Andy on my team is sort of like, if I said to you, the ball rolled down the, like there's a word that pops into your head, what chat GPT is doing is kind of kind of guessing at what the word, next word might be based on scanning a bunch of it. And this is kind of like the Model T version of it. Like the next iteration that's coming out is gonna be like 500 times, it's gonna have 500 times more parameters. So we're kind of like not even in Tesla territory yet. So I'm just curious to hear some hot takes. So timed writing samples from Sean. I'm kind of with you there, Sean. In other words, maybe students will be required to sit somewhere and write during a thing. Video essays, says Annabelle. It's plagiarism software. So Randy, fun fact, we're not so fun. There keep popping up these softwares that allow people to like detect for plagiarism and people break them within like a minute, like 20 seconds. In some cases they're like, oh, they just changed some words and they are able to like change it so that it, it doesn't work. So, so far there hasn't been one that's been able to like do it. Um, will it level the playing field? Uh, uh, great. Give me some great questions too. This is great. Could it accelerate flipped classrooms? Um, schools are going to have to get rid of essays says Natasha, I think one of my students used it this year, not cool at all because the essays were way better than her writing. <laughs> That's happening already. I mean, already New York City has basically said students and teachers cannot access it on, you know, on their devices. Um, will there be a way for screen for AI? So far, it hasn't worked. Will the SAT bring back the writing section? Will admissions run a program? Yeah, some people are saying to detect it. Take a look at that, like at some point, Google that. Or you get more fun, ask ChatGPT, like, is it possible to detect? <laughs> like, ask Ch ChatGPT if that could be invented. So there's there's a whole lot that we could talk about with this. And we're, you know, we've got like 10 minutes left. Um, I'm excited to talk about this more because I think it represents uh, two things. There's like uh, an, an, an existential threat to writing as we know it in terms of it being like a reflective, like, you know, soul searching process, the thing that I built my whole career on. And so there's that that's happening. And then the reason I'm smiling is like, there are, I think, exciting possibilities, but it's so new that we're just getting to know what these things are. Um, and so could it represent interesting possibilities for students generating interesting and cool ideas? Could it help students with learning differences who just have lots of trouble, you know, in some cases getting that first draft, help get them started? Maybe. I just think it's real early to know. Um, you know, that the, the, but I am excited to play with it. And I want to encourage you, if this sounds interesting or kind of curious, 
to like play with it for even five minutes, just so that you can get to that wow moment where you go, oh, this is like a thing. Because I do think that this this kind of is an inflection point in one of those technology moments where my friend and I, my best friend and I, who's also a writer, he was talking about the night when we discovered the internet together. We went to our friend Ralph's house and we were like, oh my gosh, we can look for anything? Like, what what should we look for? And we kind of had that moment with Chat GPT. He was over, he brought his daughter over because they're, you know, my daughter is really good friends with her. And we were sitting in the on the couch. And yeah, we could have talked about like, I don't know, other stuff, but we wandered on the conversation, Chat GPT, and I just like brought it off my phone and like screencast it. And we're just like there asking questions of it. So I it's fun and a little scary for me. Yes, I'll admit. And I guess part of why I'm laughing too is like probably like you know, not too thinly veiled nervousness about like what this could mean for how I do my work and how we do our work. Um, three themes I'm calling in this year. I know that was a quick transition, but I'm trying to get through my bullet points because I do like to get through my bullet points. Um, actually, before I give you my, before I give you mine, I'd love to hear for you all in this, in the sort of spirit back to that starting moment where we were sort of just brainstorming a little bit together and heck let's just bring up I've got a values list that we can I can throw up for you but if you had to pick two or three values to call into your life this year here let me just screen share here what would be two or three values that you would like to have what, what do you want more of in your life what are you calling in and share in the chat if you would And if you feel like it, bonus question, what's one way that you could bring more of that into your life? I'm, I, I realize I'm liking the, the second question because I want to have a little more context on you. Yeah, what are you calling into your life this year? What are two or three values? My friend Aaron Ross uses this term, like what are you calling in? What do you want to magnetize? And you get to say it out loud here in front of 282 people. You may not know at this moment how it's going to come into your life, but what are you willing to stand up as it were and say that you want to call in? Thanks for your willingness to share. I'm appreciating these. I'm reading all of them, by the way. Hmm. Make time to do nothing is resonating for me. I'll put, the, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. I'll just put this in the chat. I'll share mine. Um, it's something like the value of putting my own mask on first. Um, I think that value is something like self-care. Um, I'm actually noticing I have like some tears coming up as I say this. Um, so it's a lie for me, I suppose. Um, what does that look like? Fun? I'm, you know, some of y'all know I'm like a board game nerd. So I have like a semi-regular games night, which I'm really excited about board game night with my friends. Um, and I'm playing pickleball when it's not raining like crazy, like it is this last week. Um, boundaries. I've been pretty good this year about in the past year about not working after 5 PM. And I don't work too much on weekends anymore, which I'm 
excited to share with you. Um, someone mentioned saying no more. I'm working on that, I think. Um, but that's what self-care might look like to me. Um, another big one is this webinar is like a value, what I would call a contribution. And hopefully, notice the order of trying to like do the self-care one first so that I have more to give. But contribution feels huge to me. And, and I, you know, I do it through writing. I think I've moved away from writing a little bit and I've missed it and like moved away from content creation. And so I want to do more content creation, more stuff like, like this. And community, community is big. Like there's community in my personal life. I have um, a practice that I'm really into called circling. It's relational meditation. That's meant so much to me. And I have like a small group of, it's a closed group that I'm working with um, here in Los Angeles. And then I want to, I want to connect with you all with like a, my larger counselor colleague community. I want to go to a couple of conferences, not too many, but like two, maybe three. Um, and I want to create virtual community spaces um, because I've gotten such, I've, I've found that, you know, it's not quite the same as being in person, but I found that I can get some of the juice, some of the, the goodness from, um, from sessions, um, especially sessions where I'm not doing all the talking. So <laughs> I'm looking forward to that a little bit more. Okay, um, I want to share with you a little bit about this program that I launched this, that we launched this morning, not me, it was certainly a whole team. Ashley had a lot to do with it. Um, I want to walk you through it and tell you about it. And then we'll hang out for a few minutes. I'm probably going to go a little bit long. I'm going to stay and hang out. But let me share with you this thing that we've spent a lot of time thinking about and working on. So this is our counselor training program and community. If I could do a little sound, I would, I would do it. Um, and essentially what this is, it's explained in this video, which was shot right there, but I did a bunch of focus groups. Some of you were in them. Thank you. Um, and I asked, Hey, what do you want from CEG land from the CEG verse? Um, and that stands for college essay guy. And folks were like, I want some new content. And some other folks were like more community. And I was like, yeah, me too. Um, other, I talked to some high school counselors, like I want to meet other high school counselors who have the same issues that I have and that we can talk to. Um, so one of the big things and this, I maybe should have put this first was like staying up to date with current trends, having big conversations about some of these things, these shifts that are happening. And then somebody put this and I feel ashamed, like put it into say it out loud to you, but someone was like more in-person opportunities with Ethan. And that is a thing that one person said. So, um, we put together this program and essentially it's a series of 60 minute workshops. So monthly workshops like this one hour sessions. Um, it's two four week courses and I'll get into the details in just a second. And the opportunity to connect in a community on this platform called circle year round. Um, and it's sort of like, well, you're like, well, that's kind of what Facebook does. Yeah, but it's counselor specific and we've got specific dashboards that have all the resources organized and Basically, this community is going to work alongside the courses this year. So it's not just going to be like, hey, go do your homework. It's like, okay, let's go into the community and let's talk about it. Um, the, the two things that are coming up soonest are the up-level versions of the personal statement course and the application and supplemental essays course. Some of you on this call have taken these before. So I created a separate track. So there are two tracks. One is the foundational track. So it's a four-week course. You learn all the things and the foundational folks, if you've never taken the course before, I walk through like the brainstorming, the structure, you know, I've got something called this choose your own adventure tool that I created that walks you through every single part of the process with lots of Q and A. And then for advanced folks, meaning you've, you're a veteran, you've done this for a bunch of years, or you've taken the course before, I've got a whole separate track and we're going to be doing more conversation and specifically working on issues that come up with your particular students. Um, there's a whole detailed syllabus on this page, which actually, let me just throw this your way so you can, if you want, see this. Um, and I'm only gonna spend like two more minutes on this, but I'm just really excited to share it with you. Um, and then this application and supplemental essays course that starts right after it and essentially is like, okay, let's zoom back now besides the personal statement, let's talk about all the other parts of the application, the activities list, the additional info, the supplemental essays. And again, I'm doing a foundational and advanced track because one of the, not well, I guess complaints, yeah, the critiques of the course that I've done in the past is like, hey, it was great, but I was in with, you know, beginners or vice versa. I was in with advanced folks and felt like I was just catching up. So I felt like by splitting the cohort and so, sorry, there's only like one time offered for each of those, but so some folks will be missed, but 
Um, hopefully that's going to catch a bunch of folks. Um, the other main big, big thing, well, I, I guess I, I'm just kind of zooming past all the things, but the community, it's, it's a private moderated community. That sounds so, I don't know what it sounds, but let me just, I'm going to flash you into it real quick. So it's hosted on Circle, which is a rad new platform. And here's me in shorts at NACAC. Um, and we've got a whole bunch of different sessions. So, you know, for example, in the parent community, which is not this, but you'll see that like upcoming events pop up. And there's like a section where you introduce yourself with what's your name, your geographic location, how long have you been a counselor? Here's me introducing myself 20 hours ago because we just opened this up. And then we're gonna have separate channels where we can talk about things like chat GPT. Um, and then we can watch past recordings. And then inside there will be like separate locked channels for that'll be unlocked if you're taking this program where like the personal statement and the college application, supplemental essays. And then we're also gonna add separate channels sort of as needed based on folks' interests. Um, there we're also gonna do troubleshooting sessions. So when it comes, when you're in season and you're like trying to figure out how do I solve X and Y with my students, I'm gonna invite members of my team. I've got a whole bunch of coaches that have, <laughs> we've worked a bunch to, to you know, solve these problems. And we're gonna meet in small groups to basically help you and you know whoever's on these calls and help each other work through student issues. So we're calling these like our troubleshooting sessions. We're gonna do at least two of those. And if folks wanna do more of them, we'll do more of them. But the big thing is going to be these workshops. So starting in February, so a couple of weeks from now, we're going to do, we're going to start, you know, hosting these conversations on things like chat GPT and open AI. If people are really interested in it and we want to form like a mastermind group or a small working group around it, we will do it. Uh, we're going to talk about things for like folks who are considering transitioning to private college counseling, writing better rec letters. And these will be like one hour sessions. Um, how do you work with quote unquote average student writers? I'm going to do AMA sessions, ask me anything sessions in here. So I don't, I'm not going to go through this whole page, but essentially the invitation is to like hang out all year. <laughs> um, and we've got an early bird rate for the program. We've got also a sign up with a friend rate. <laughs> so if there's somebody else that you're like, oh, let's do this, you can get 20% off. And we've got um, pay what you can for uh, high school counselors. We've got scholars, we call them scholarship spots. And we've also got group rates. So if you're like a, at a school and you're like, you know what, it would be cool if like a few of us did this together, um, you can fill out the group rate form. So if you scroll down to the bottom of the page, you'll see the rates and stuff. And there's, yeah, the early bird is done like, I'm calling it the early decision rate because I thought that was super clever. Um, but we want to make this accessible and um, we want to invite a whole bunch of y'all. I want to connect with you this year. So um, if you have questions, you can you can ask them now if you want. But I also just want to open up time to just hang out for a few minutes. So I'm going to stay here for another, I don't know, 10 minutes or so and hang out. And we can chat about whatever you like. We can go back to ChatGPT if we want. Um, you can ask me questions about the program. Um, but thanks, Sharon, you're sweet. My dad joke. It's kind of like a dad joke mixed with like a college admission counselor dad joke, the early decision rate. And... Oh, the, someone's asking, is this the price for the course? No. So the price that's listed, the $18.97 is the price for like the entire year. And so everything is, you know, everything that's listed there is included in that. So let's hang out. Is anyone coming to Austin South by Southwest? Mike is asking. Some folks are asking about pay what you can for IECs. If you're an IEC, we've got payment plans that we can do um, to make it, you know, more accessible. So hopefully that makes it easier. There's a, we're kind of like trying to stack a bunch of discounts. So we're like early bird and then like sign up with a friend and like, so anyway, thanks Shelly. Juliana had to verify that I was not a robot twice to sign up for chat AI. Alan, I might be open to that. Will you just email Ashley with that? So Alan is asking, yeah, will you just email help at collegeessayguy.com? My brother is joining. Two minutes past the webinar time. Do we get a certificate when finished? Great question, Anne. So we've tried to offer certificates in the past. And what I found out is that you got to go through a lot, a lot of like lawyerly stuff and like official stuff to get a certificate. So I was actually advised by a lawyer who became my lawyer, who was actually 
the, the husband of an IEC to not to not offer an official certification because I could kind of get in trouble for that. So we do not, I could, I would print something out for you and be like, here, you finish this. Um, but I can't offer like a, an official certification that's like resumeable. Um, who wants to be, Ashley wants to know who wants to be my sign up buddy. I love that. Here's totally find a sign up buddy right now. That's great. I love it. Do you take students for private consultation? My team does. I'm I'm moving away from working with students directly, and but I've got an amazing team of folks that we've trained. That was a direct message. Sorry. Um, ah, I I don't know. Someone's asking me about that. Can we get CE credits for CEP? I don't know. I could ask Steve. Um, Antonoff about how to get how to I don't know how to set up CE credits. Is that, if anybody knows, if you could email me or email help at collegeessayguy.com, we could totally maybe include that. That would be really cool. Natasha's signing up right now. Yay. <laughs> great. I'm so excited. Lori wants to sign up, buddy, too. This is great. Um I should have told we should have totally created some little system where people could find a sign up, buddy. Maybe you could just direct message each other right now. <laughs> it's okay. I mean, Kimberly, if it, it, you, you're saying I want to help with match letters, but I just started, that's okay. I'd say still, still sign up. And like, you know, we, there definitely is like a, you know, a vetting process and Erica will ask about, you know, your experience and stuff, but um, can everyone in attendance get a group rate? <laughs> um, maybe, but it, I mean, uh, I don't know how that would work. Does the buddy discount stack with the early bird? It does, Casey. Don't tell anybody. No, I'm kidding. The buddy discount does stack with the early bird. So. Great for everybody. <laughs> message. Some of you are asking for a sign up buddy. Just message each other right now. Maybe as an a no. That's funny. Some of y'all, you've already, I've already seen like six or eight people do that. So. I think that's going to save like hundreds of dollars. Um, I'm scrolling up. Do you think the changes resulting from ChatGPT will manifest in next year's applications or will be a slower moving shift? My, uh, I'm just guessing here, but I think that, I don't, I might've read this somewhere. I think that colleges are going to be more reactive than proactive. And somebody was talking about the government and the way the government sort of responds to things. And what I mean by this is like, I, when I talk to my college rep friends, they're like, no, nah, it's fine. But I'm like, have you seen what this thing can do? <laughs> like, it's kind of bonkers. Um, and I don't want to like fan the flames necessarily, but I do want to be realistic. I'm going to be reaching out to two more college rep friends who I've done past sessions. I want to reach out to Rick Clark at Georgia Tech this week and be like, hey, what do you think about this thing? Will it happen next year? I think so. I think this thing is here. And I think there will be some percentage of students that are using this thing. You know, I don't know if it's 10% or 40%, but I think some percentage of students are going to use this thing, whether we like it or not. The question for me is like, well, two questions, at least one, what do we tell our students? And then are there any practical uses for our work? Or do we want to just sort of, you know, I'm not going to look at it. I'm going to do it old school. Oh, this is a good question. So related, but not related, thoughts about test optional in the next cycle. Well, let me open this up. What do y'all think about test optional in the next cycle? Given the landscape of college admissions. I want everybody to sort of let's let's amateur peer into our crystal balls and go, what do we think? Are our, our colleges, we should do a little poll, going to stay test optional? Are they going to go back to testing? Or will more students, will more, will more schools, <laughs> there's the, uh, this is the little um, poll of like who is here tonight. I realized I didn't end the poll. We don't, we're not literally going to do a poll, but I'm just curious in the chat informally, what do y'all think about how test options going to go? And then I can share my, the reason I don't share my thoughts first is I read this thing about in scenarios where there is like a, for example, a boss person. And right now I'm the boss person because I'm like facilitating the webinar. If this, if I share my thoughts first, then there's this psychological thing where we tend to like share what that person shared. It's like social and pro-social anyway. So I'm, I want to, I'm curious, what do y'all think? Test optional stays the same, more test optional, or do you think less test optional?
pretty varied responses. It's, yeah, it's, I, I should have done a little quick poll. I love the find a buddy thing. It's, it's not what I predicted on this session, but it's really sweet. It's, it's also, I mean, I think why it's sweet is it's like, it's, it feels very childlike. Like I'm looking for a friend, you know, I know it's not what we're doing, but it's like, it feels really sweet in that way. I love how many opinions we have on this too. Like these are, so here's my, I'm, I'm like flash forwarding. All of these things are so huge that I want to, part of why I want to create this community is I want us to be talking about these things together more. And I feel like like these three of the things that we talked about, like chat GPT, affirmative action, and sort of this, the whole test optional thing is stuff that's, I don't want to say hanging the balance, but that is like so present. And I can talk on and on about all of these things. What about the digital SAT? We're going to find out. This is, yes. So um, I wonder if the AI issue will play into the test optional question. I want, so let me just, let's, let me, let me shift the question a little bit. Is like, what impact could you see something like chat GPT and artificial intelligence having on whether schools decide to test or not? I don't, I didn't ask that question perfectly clearly, but let's say, Let's say, for, first of all, many people are saying ChatGPT is not going to be free for long, that it's going to be gated pretty soon. And so, you know, you'll have to, pay, you know, it, uh, which creates access issues. But anyway, assuming that students are using it, will colleges want to test more or less? We don't know, but I'm just curious. What does that do to your brain? We all in friends. I'm going to read out loud some of the things because folks might be on their phone. Um, so test optional will stay to allow more diversity, but testing will be important for some majors and be beneficial at some universities, yeah. Um, a few years ago, there was a group talking about redesigning college admissions. They're still around. Not sure what happened to that. We'd love to have that as a discussion one day. Absolutely. In fact, that sounds great. We could bring Marie in to talk about that. Hack the gates, I think is what you're talking about. So Marie Bigham at, um, at Accept, A-C-C-E-P-T, um, is hack the gates. And that's, I'd love to hear a follow-up on like what's going on with hack the gates. I'll just, I'll bring you into the community and we'll talk about it. That sounds great. Yeah, that's it. We taught, we were, you know, we did, we did a session not too long ago about reducing bias and letters of recommendation letters, letters of recommendation letters. How about that? Those are the actual letters in the letters. No. Um, Let's see, Chris says, testing will increase again since GPT will permit more students to write assisted college essays, making them less genuine and helpful for college admission officers. It actually makes me wonder, and I didn't expect this, but it does, somebody was saying earlier, it makes me wonder if there does become that timed essay writing. So we were kind of like glad that finally the standardized test got rid of the essays. Are those coming back? Does college essay guy become like, oh, I just, I, I, I kind of like, it feels gross to think about like how that would change my job. So it's no longer about like, I mean, I guess so. I mean, I guess we're still going to have to be training students to be reflective and, but on the spot, it just feels, I did that. I mean, I, I taught in test prep right after I graduated college and I know what that feels like. And it just was not, it didn't give me ease, purpose, and joy. <laughs> um, college AI guy. Well, we joke about this. We joke about this internally. We're like, remember when our company was called college essay guy today? And in fact, in a meeting, someone's like college essentials guy, or maybe we just go to CEG, just like KFC eventually <laughs> didn't have chicken. And so they just like switched. And I'm like, oh man, this is, this is real. This is happening. College AI guy. Right. Oh my gosh. Just on trend, whatever sort of, yeah. Um, someone's asking, is there a list somewhere of colleges with direct admit to majors? We would miss you. <laughs> Sharon says, also, I don't know how this would work big picture, but so many of these things that seem small are barriers. Asking for teacher rec letters was super intimidating for low-income students I've worked with before. So maybe this could move toward even fewer barriers somehow. 
uh, I want to be optimistic too, but it's tricky. It seems like any of these things sort of create their own kinds of barriers. Will there be a time the colleges will all agree to have the same prompts and attach handwritten college essay prompts to a standardized test? Yeah. God, it's, it does seem like it shifts our work then instead of college essays to being around like preparing for these timed writing things, which will teachers and school counselors use chat BGBT for LORs? Um, isn't, has anybody heard of that happening yet? Because I heard earlier on the session, someone's like, I already did that. <laughs> Concourse Global could become more popular. I'm a vote for that. I'm a big fan. You'll still need to brainstorm, discover values, et cetera, to feed the AI. I think that's true, Tina. I, I mean, and, and I also wonder, are there interesting applications that could be, you know, they could generate some help students, even, even like with the sort of like the iterating and the coming up with cool ideas. I, I, I do, it does feel weird and gross and scary when an essay is suddenly being written, but there's also this part of me that's like, hey, this thing is here. How do we invite it into the room? Ooh. How will colleges change? What will they want to see in a student? They also have to tackle this problem. Yeah, and I think it's so early. I've talked to one rep at a Pacific, at a university in the Pacific Northwest who said he doesn't fear it, but I think he Googled what this thing was before I, like after he, before he responded to me. So I don't know that he's gone super in depth on it. I want to see how good, in, how, how good I was in writing a letter of rec. I must say it gave me a good place to start. I rewrote from there. I mean, I definitely submitted a, a proposal to talk about chat GPT at an upcoming conference. And I was like, you know, what would help me write this proposal is chat GPT. So I put it in and I was like, and yes, and I, and I owned it. I mean, I, I said in the proposal and yes, chat GPT did help me write this proposal. Um, and it was pretty good. I, it, I mean, it's given me, it gave me like uh, Christmas ideas for what I want to get my wife. It actually wrote the Christmas card for my wife. I didn't end up using it because it wasn't a very good letter. Um, it's wild, y'all. It's wild. All right. Speaking of my wife, she and my daughter just walked by in the background. And this is like the precious two hours that I have with my daughter before we go read Harry Potter. So I'm going to log off. But um, thanks for staying, y'all. And I hope to see some of you in, inside this community, this program. We'll have, of course, more um, live sessions coming up. But um, yeah, much love. I'm glad to connect with you. And, and I just appreciate you. Bunches. Waving at y'all. See you soon. All the heart emojis. Someone did this one for me, which is like the, I think it's, no, it's like this, right? Where you do like the heart. <laughs> there it is. All right. I'll see y'all soon. Bye.